Welcome back to Electro Anarchy. Well, went to the shop and started working on getting this some of this stuff cut and I don't know, getting it set up to do the hardware stuff. I know last time I said I was going to go to the computer and uh, uh, start doing that, but I had to be honest with you, I got bored with that. Um, plus, I was looking into some stuff and I kind of got off on a tangent where um, wanting to put some uh, different LEDs, some different things, and basically ran out of possible inputs on the Raspberry Pi. So at this point I may have to do, uh, I don't know, I may have to do some bit swapping or, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure just yet. But irregardless, we're going get to get on with the hardware stuff. Now, they're not beautiful, obviously. But, um, what I did was, I didn't even really care. Uh, basically all I had to do is hold a, hold a speaker. So, I just went in, kind of quick and dirty, put a router to it, cut them out, and it's not like it's going to be seen. Now, if it was going to be seen, of course, it's going to be different. I would have put it in a jig, made my template, cut it out with a router properly, but this was just a quick freehand. I had a few minutes earlier today while I was finishing up another job and I decided to knock this out. So what I did basically was cut the speaker speaker holes out here. Um, now the LED screen is going to fit right here, right at the top here. Okay, So it's going to fit right above the speakers. And inside the sides is where I cut the grooves for the LCD to fit into. There and there. Okay. So basically, you're going to have it to where, when you're sitting here, now, let's get it together and it'll become more obvious. Alright, first things first, let's get start getting this thing back together. Make sure my calculations were right. I hope they are. I have a problem. If I have a problem, I just have to find a solution. You know what we do with problems? Okay, and that groove is right here, right on the edge of this piece here. Now the LCD is going to sit down right into that groove right above the speakers. So basically you're going to have the speaker right here and the LCD right above it, probably a little higher, somewhere in that area. But essentially, this LCD, which you can see right here, it is almost as uh, wide as this piece of wood. So I had to relieve the sides to be able to get this guy in. Now, um, what I plan on doing uh, to this entire thing is I'm going to put a piece of polyacrylic, or just a piece of acrylic, across the entire front. I'm going to put graphics over the speaker. It's going to be an opening over the screen. Uh, and I'm thinking about, because there is some depth from here, right here, uh, putting the poly along this edge. And then inside of here, possibly building uh, and putting in some LEDs, maybe going up, strobe up, strobe down, or flash on and on. Uh, on and off 
and up here at the top putting in a another little another piece here probably across here and up and then have a piece of acrylic um, and on the inside of it have graphics with LEDs so that you have several different ways uh, for different games to uh, to show off some cool graphics. <laughs> Alright, let's get this other piece on. Alright. I know it's been a little while since I did a video, but I've had uh, a rough week, put it that way. Got some uh, big jobs in the shop. And uh, this is actually my first weekend in a while to actually, well, I did do some work today, but basically pull apart and re-glue a wooden file cabinet, so that didn't take too very long. yet but put this back on you start seeing what uh, how this is supposed to work like there. So the speakers just clear everything essentially like that. So you have your two speakers left and right, um, be wired from behind. First, I originally was going to put them out here, uh, but uh, decided, you know, I kind of wanted some depth here. Um, just because I'm thinking, like I said, putting the, the acrylic on the inside here, being able to put some graphics on there, I think would be cool. Maybe some lights, some LEDs, I don't know, just, just something there. Uh, and then on this here, I uh, haven't decided on whether to put the acrylic to come all the way down and then drill, uh, maybe drill some, uh, I don't know, maybe some holes. Of course, obviously holes for the sound to come through, but maybe some you know, maybe some designs. Maybe put some graphics across here, um, you know, and put some designs and maybe put some LEDs so you have sound coming out as well as some illumination, something kind of cool, you know. Um, I mean, obviously when you're playing a game, you don't really want a whole bunch of crap blinking at you and stuff, but then again, maybe in some games, like Summer game, summer uh, was it summer Games 84 or something like that, or 88, um, you know, the, the, I believe the cabinets had some really cool things when you did certain things, it would have like jump, you know, and you'd be going along and getting up your speed, and then it would have jump, and then the light would come on and you would jump, and, you know, so I kind of want to simulate some of those things, I think would be kind of cool. Um, and, you know, I don't know. We'll see how it all works out. I believe that uh, MAME has the ability uh, built into it to emulate not only the games themselves, but also um, the custom things with the cons with the, uh, the the lights and different things like that. Which, you know, I just want to make it as cool as possible in the smallest format as possible. So we'll see what happens. But it looks like everything's going to work out okay, which is good. So I guess let's start getting some of this stuff mounted up properly. If I get some of this stuff out of frame, it's kind of bulky. And I have another tripod coming, as well as another camera coming, but uh, it's not here yet. Oh, 
I'm talking about how I made these holes. Um, this material on here is just a plastic coating. So what I thought, you know, at first I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll make a template, uh, trace out the inside of the speaker, and go to all that. And I got thinking about it. And I'm like, no. When I went to do this today, I had a customer that came by, dropped off some stuff, and so I had just a few minutes to get this prepped before I took off to the shop. And so I thought, all right, what's the quickest way I can do this? So what I did is I took a piece of styrofoam, it came with some kind of crap I bought, and I basically just, you can see it pressed the edge of the speaker in here, and basically I got a rough outline of the shape of the speaker. Then was able to take, cut it out with a razor knife, then lay it down on top of the wood, and then basically transfer and, you know, just actually used a pair of tweezers and just etched a little bit of a little bit of a, a line here. Matter of fact, you can see the line right here. It's fairly easy to etch. So I etched a line, and then once I etched the line, this is like I said a plastic coating on this, this MDF. So I was able to take and just peel this off. So you see in the video um, when I am routering out this these openings that this is completely removed and that gave me a template to basically run around with the router to get it close then put in the speaker test it and if it's a little tight pull it out and you know do a little bit more but when you're doing anything like this um, the only real well really the only critical things that you need to worry about are the corners where the screw holes are you need to have enough material to be able to mount the speaker securely and you don't want to go above the line that's going to be, you know, basically your uh, surround for your speaker. Um, it's not super, super critical because this is going to be hidden, but it is going to be fairly critical if you want to want to seal it from behind. If you know, for example, you want to put some sort of an enclosure here uh, to be to act kind of like a, you know, for sound quality, maybe increase the bass. You know, these these little speakers here. They're not, they're nothing really all that great, but I mean, this is a mobile, this is going to be a, a mobile system running off a of lithium battery. So, of course, I'm not going to put subwoofers and crazy stuff in there. But these are, see if you can see them. There you go. Uh, they're three watts at four ohms, which isn't anything great. They're actually out of uh, some powered uh, PC speakers that I got from somewhere years ago. Uh, but the nice thing about it is, rather than me having to build uh, any kind of an audio um, you know, amplification circuit and do all that, basically I just took the control board out of the PC speaker so that all I have to do is wire everything up and hook it directly into the Raspberry Pi. And this gives me the ability to control a little bit more as far as the volume and whatnot. And it also has an output for headphones. So if you want to use this thing in a place where you want to be quiet, well, it's not that hard to mount this so that, you know, somewhere on the front here, say somewhere, you mount this little guy uh, somewhere up in here or something. So when you're sitting there playing it, you can plug in your headphones and you can play it and not bother anybody. For those people who want to be like that, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, so let's get this guy going here. Wires on this thing kind of suck. It's also really good to invest in some decent tools. They don't always have to be expensive. Believe it or not, you can get quite a few things at Harbor Freight that uh, you wouldn't think are decent, but actually are.
through. It's easier to line up the rest. Another thing too, when you're mounting speakers like this, I always like to put the terminals toward the inside. Um, it just makes wiring a little bit easier. So for example, we've got this one on the inside here, and then we'll put this one over here. So then you have your terminals right here. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things whenever you get to the wiring stage, instead of having you know wires all over the place and crazy stuff, just makes it, you know, nicer. Oh, and on the side, another uh, note. Um, I actually ordered today, ordered uh, some um, HDMI cable with that has uh, the six inches long. So um, that should work perfect to be able to mount, you know, uh, the uh, the Raspberry Pi on one side, and then be able to loop it over and then hook it into. The LCD control board. Now, somewhere in here, uh, the LCD is going to the, the wiring um, is going to go through for the LCD. Uh, so, probably have the wiring come through. Maybe have the control board here. Wiring comes through, connects to the control board. HDMI loops over, hooks into the Raspberry Pi. And as it stands right now, I think there might be even a a second microcontroller. Um, that I'll use to handle all of the outputs from MAME. Uh, for example, all of the, the LEDs, um, thinking about, of course, there's an LED that goes in here, but um, actually thinking about doing a, you know, maybe even three LEDs or a RGB LED that changes color would be kind of kind of cool. Um, and then, of course, some other things. Like I said, I'm running out of options on the Raspberry Pi unless I go and build a, a USB um, interface for the Pi to connect to all of my different things. But uh, I don't know, just something I wanted to share there. As we get further into this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about.
Oh, what do you think? Actually, it looks like that's a little off. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. So now, the back side we can just run wiring out here, here, maybe. Well, no, we're going to put the control control panel. Actually, the the soundboard will be back, basically down underneath here, underneath that over there. So that'll work out nicely. Get the rest of the screws in this thing. I was talking to my brother the other day, and uh, he said that when he was watching the videos, that uh, it seemed like there was that the light um, there was a lot of darkness in the light, uh, the video, which you know I've got two really really bright bulbs right above right above me, and I, I do have a whole a light strip of. of uh, halogens, but the halogens seem to be, I don't know, they seem to have a more yellowish tone to them. So I decided to switch cameras um, and see if maybe, maybe a camera would have a, you know, make a difference. So hopefully this video looks better than some of the video I shot before. As long as we're getting better, right? Because that's the way I always looked at it. As long as things are getting better. Alright. So we're going to want to do this. And then this guy is going to go right about in here. And the connector about in here. So right in this area. Let's just make a little X. Okay. I think we're pretty close there. Probably take a paddle bit and uh, cut a couple holes, basically make an oblong hole, just enough to get the cable down through here. And then we can start buttoning some of this stuff up and see what it looks like. Cool. Okay, as you can see, we found some, we found some paddle bits here. So let's see works the best for this. A lot of this stuff out of the way. Alright. Yeah. I think 
we will try to use a three quarter first. Should us where we need to be. From the X, which is here. One side of it. things up a bit. Oh well, joys of doing things like this. I normally suggest putting this on a piece of wood, but I didn't have a piece of wood here to put it on. It is what it is. This is a temporary mount just to see how it kind of fits together here. So far, so good.
here we go. So it still has a little wiggle room, which is good. Don't want anything bound up. Um, whenever I go to mount this thing permanently and get it right where I want it, I'm going to probably go in behind here and put some, probably some double-sided tape or maybe some double-sided foam tape, um, um, very very thin um, foam tape, but uh, really keep them up just off of these speakers right here, uh, just so there's a little bit of gap in case I want to put something across there. But like I said, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not too sure yet exactly um, what I'm going to do in that respect, but irregardless, it all seems to mount up. It seems to look okay. And with this in place, there we go. So essentially, it's not quite straight, but you get the gist. Well, there we go. We got the screen and the speakers. Then, up here on the top, I uh, pulled the pins out so that I could do all the work to it, but uh, basically I'll put the original top back on, but I'm going to build somewhere in here once I get the screen mount figured out, uh, I'm going to come back in and I'm probably going to build uh, an area out here and an enclosure across so that um, what I'm wanting to do is put a piece across here um, and have the main logo across here and then have LEDs inside of there to be able to flash on and off or however you want to do it and then down here in the bottom since the screen takes up so much of the space here which is good big screens always good um, but in any case what I've thought about doing is the acrylic will be out here which there'll be a pretty good space between the acrylic and the screen. Now obviously you want to make sure that when you put something in front of this, this is going to be set back in so you want it to be black all the way around it. Well we've got that here and here. Um, up here this will have to be blacked out which is easy to accomplish with some tape. Same thing with down here, it's easy to accomplish with some tape but where the speakers are um, that needs to be hidden. So either I build something across here or what I thought about doing is building 3D printing a piece up to have LEDs maybe you know little in indicators that strobe toward the screen or back and forth so that when this is sitting at idle you'll have LEDs here maybe some LEDs across here in the front uh, your of course your logo up here and then your coin slot down here, and you can't see it, down here, and have it to where it, you know, all this things, you know, gives a really cool visual, you know, come play me, I'm cool, you know, type of thing. So, anyway, um, I'm going to keep building on this, but this will be it for this episode, and uh, next episode, hopefully, we'll uh, start connecting a lot of these things together, and uh, start, 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 uh, See, see how far we can get. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Uh, I'm a new YouTuber. Um, you know, I do a lot of different things. If it's something, you know, if you like this and you want more things like this, um, you know, the more detailed step-by-step -step type of thing, of not so much just a tutorial as it would be, you know, my idea is like you are sitting here with me and we're a couple buddies hanging out and, and you're seeing what I'm seeing and of course you're kind of the silent one you know you're kind of like silent Bob but hey uh, you do have the ability to, to you know pop in the comments say something hey do you like this I'm a crap is this junk don't ever want to see this again please shut up go away crawl in a hole hey we like you keep going you know whatever the case may be uh, if you like it give me a thumbs up if you don't like it thumbs down equal opportunity summer <laughs> but uh, you know let me know what you think if you like this and want me to keep going please subscribe to the channel um, and um, 
well, we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, that's going to be the end for this one. Thanks for watching. Um, have a good night or day or whatever. Just be good. Be happy. See you next time.